the German in me. <laughs> Schlecht. All right, we're testing averages, breaking distance. So it's like a goodness of fit. It's like the goodness of fit, except you're not testing more than two proportions, you're testing more than two averages. It's one of the most used tests in statistical literature. I also think it gets overused. I think people use it when they shouldn't, and you'll see that as you go to your research methods classes and see other stuff. You shouldn't always run an ANOVA, but it is a very, very popular one to run, and you're about to see why I think it's popular. Andrea, go. Other than the ANOVA, what would you use to test multiple? I would generally default if I couldn't make, and this is a big if, if I couldn't make the data fit the requirements for an ANOVA. That's the problem I have. People, as soon as they have three data sets or four data sets, shove it through an ANOVA calculator. Sure. You gotta check, first of all, the data has to be roughly bell-shaped, which ours is. Secondly, it can't have a whole bunch of outliers, which ours did and we took care of. Okay, so Most people that. don't check off those things. And I, we, we've been conversationally talking about it all term long. Most people don't, and your last question on your exam, as you go online and Google non-parametric -par alternatives to everything we've learned in here, every single test you've learned has what's called a non-parametric alternative, like your last project was, where you don't have to worry about bell-shaped data or enough data or outliers in there. There are other tools, and one of your exam questions is to find one for ANOVA. Yeah. And it's great. They're, they're out there. It's just, and it's simple. It's as simple as Google. Non-parametric alternative to ANOVA, boom, you'll get 18,000 hits off the first page. So they all exist. And they're all run with technology. They're beautiful. Okay, Although I don't want to run straight to technology today. I want to at least have you see what the hell's going on with it. Yeah. Can we say new one, new two, new exactly. Two. Let's get down to that. Let's get down to that. Yes, for sure. So we're going to learn an ANOVA. And again, the reason it's an acronym for analysis of variance. I have that in a spreadsheet, which I will also share with you as long as somebody reminds me to do it. We are testing averages, and the average is breaking distance. On average, from the three breaks. Break styles, I guess. Styles spelled correctly. Breaking systems. Sure, system styles. I really wish I could test discs too. That'd be freaking rad. If I could throw a disc break on there too, that'd be really cool. But no mounts for it, so I couldn't. Like, it's like I'm really glad you didn't. I'm so big. And then they'll four as well. <laughs> Please, Jack. I've got a question. On Go. Your study method or on your testing Good method. question, because I'm sure it's soft. Um, <laughs> same pads on all three. Cool stops. I retrofitted them on the, on the candies. Yeah. Great question. Another variable that needs to, needs to be accounted for. And actually, I put a brand new. God, what's, this? what's the definition of, of uh, insanity? Doing the same thing, expecting different results. Keep putting the pen in the pocket. It's got the same hole in it. Um, I put cool stops brand new on the candies. Brand new on the mini V's and then brand new on these guys. Because I've been wearing through brake pads on in this rain. I've been blowing through the V brake pads just because it's what brake does to them. So yeah, great question. Same wheels, same tires. I actually put the old tires back on to run the test. I mean, I, I, I was trying to be as controlled as I possibly could because I knew the amount of variability in everything else. I, I say the, the roads were dry for those four hours. There could have been different humidity levels on the asphalt that I couldn't measure. I mean, I don't know that because I don't know physics that well. So I tried to control everything I could. Thank you, Jackson. Great question. Should Great we question. say U1 is the cantilever? Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. So we got, we got mu. We can do this. We can actually just go mu cantilever. So mu can. Okay. Mu mini V. Mm -hmm. And mu full V. How's that? That's good. That's good. What should we say about them? They're all equal. Because that's the assumption, right? If we're trying to prove that one's better than the others or two are better than a third, you're not going to come out claiming that in your null. Your null is your status quo and that there's no difference whatsoever. I just said ever. Sorry. You're going to miss the bad jokes. <laughs> What's the opposite of that? <laughs> no, I'm not. What's the opposite of that? Where? Good, I like that. Can we, I want to go with JC's language because you guys seem to like it better last time. At least one of the averages is different. How's that? Rather than writing them all out, because how many possibilities, how many different possibilities could there really be if we were to list all the possibilities out? We've got one right here, they're all equal. 
sub number to whatever power minus one. <laughs> Listen to you! That's exactly right! Two? Is that eight? Eight minus one! There'd be seven! Good job. There'd be seven! Yes, sub number to the something minus one. I love that, Andre. Thank you. It's two. Because either this one is, is or isn't, is or isn't, is or isn't. That's two cubed. The number of equal signs between them, essentially. So one is taken care of here. So either they're all different, same different, same different, same different, different difference. I mean, there's all, yeah, exactly. So we don't want to write all that stuff out. We just want to say at least one exactly. Now, of course, there is a limitation for doing that, isn't there? If we get a big p-value, we're fine. Because if we get a big p-value, we're going to assume that everything's equal. And therefore, put whatever breaks are cheapest on your bike, essentially, because they're all breaking distance the same, right? Or get more data and test it up at a higher confidence level or something like that. But if we get a small p-value, that means we believe at least one is different, yes? And what does that mean? What do we then, then what do we have to do? Which one? Which one is different or ones are different? Good. Sorry, that was a little excessive too. Which ones? Good or different? Good! And that is a different, bad, different, good. you got to go back and look at different, because ANOVA doesn't let you do that, which is one of the problems with ANOVA. It doesn't give you a direction. It just says, up, oh, flag, up. Oh. They have to say, what, what play was flagged, you know, essentially. Good. So we have to rely on the test first. Get the test done. We'll deal with that momentarily. I say momentarily, I mean in 48 hours we come and regroup. But let's get through the errors right now. What would a type 1 be? And don't try to change your thinking. It's still a type 1. It's still a false positive, which would mean... Saying it's different when it's not. Say, saying what's different? At least, one of the other. At least one of those breaking distances is different, when in fact, they're all the same. So we make a claim. Your mini bees are the best. False. False. What's the chance of that error? Five percent. It's been that way all class. If you want to deathly avoid a type 1 error, what should you do? If you want to deathly avoid a type 1 error, change your confidence, change your confidence and make it higher. Because that will shove down your chance of a type 1. It makes it get further out on the curve, right? You have to get further out on the curve to be truly unusual. Good. Thank you, sisters and brothers. All right. What's a type 2? False negative. Stacy, go. Good. Say they're all the same when at least one's different. Say all the breaking distance is identical, but at least one of them is actually different than the others, and you missed it. What's the chance of that? Trick question. Careful. What's the chance of that? Trick question. It depends. You don't know that. This is you have an entire exam question devoted to this. You have an entire exam question devoted to calculate the chance of a type two error because you have to know if at, if at least one is different and you missed it. That means it's different which means it's away from what it should have been. And that's the thing is you don't know how far away it is. So you have to supply some theoretical. Suppose it's this far away. Suppose it's this far away. Suppose it's that far away. Yeah. And I've got a nice big fat description, a three or four page description in your homework about how to, uh, how to, how to uh, analyze type 2 errors and how to actually do that. It's, it's not, it sounds much harder than it actually is. It's not. It's a slight bit tedious, but that's it. A slight bit tedious, but that's it. Which one's worse? Let's say type 1. Type, type 1 is worse. Tell me why, JC. So let's say that the one that you choose that is different, but it's not, is the most expensive. Oh, marketing genius, huh? We ran a test, and Mini B stopped at half the distance. In actuality, that was an outlier. We were reporting on the 9.9. We ignored everything else after 9.9. We said, oh, look. The minimum here was 9.9. The maximum there was 24. The mini B stopped at only 40% of the distance of the cantilevers. Go out and buy some avid single digit sevens. Now. Marketing genius. Also highly suspect. Good. Type 1. Check. Who says type 2 is worse? Renee, tell me why type 2 is worse. Um, if they are different and you don't adjust your technique, then you could. You might have an accident that you could have avoided. Do you going to say the same thing? Yeah, now you got to remember too, somebody just said, how does, what does different mean, greater or less? If it's different, that means one is better than the other, yes? By definition of different. If they're different, they're going like this, right. which means one is better and one is worse. So one of the three, at least, is going to be better. Maybe more than one of them is better. 
But if two are worse, one is better. If two are better, one is worse. And depending, I think we can define worse and better pretty easily here. Better would be less distance needed to break. That's better. You could have two better or one worse, which I think is the case we have right here. I want to make sure it holds up statistic. That's what I want to look at. So you've got two that are better than one. The question is, is either one of those better than the other? It doesn't look it right now. I just want to make sure my gut is, is settled. Fair? Decent? Let's stop there. Because the next bit's going to take us some time to get through. It'll be a great way to end our... We're not done yet. Oh, the M&Ms? You guys are turning M&Ms? Yes, please. Turn it in. Yes, yes, please. You must need to make up some quizzes. Let's get them in.